Okay, so I want to go over the lie that um, Sola Scriptura is an invention of 16th century Protestant. And we're going to go over the false arguments that Catholics and Orthodox use to trash Sola Scriptura and refute them. In what every Protestant should know about the Orthodox Church by Clark Carlton in 1997, page 117, it, uh, I uh, quote, The truth of the matter is that the doctrine of Sola Scriptura is not scriptural. In other words, the claim that the Bible is the sole source of authority for Christian life and doctrine is not found in the Bible, which is a lie. Page, from the same source, page 91, I quote, The irony is that the principle by which the Reformers sought to return to the purity of the early church was itself unknown to the early church. The idea of Sola Scriptura was an invention of the 16th century. No father or council of the early church ever asserted that the scriptures in and of themselves, without any reference to the church, are the all-sufficient rule of faith. The Reformation is the sole of scripture principle, of Sola Scriptura was and is an invention of the Reformation itself. This means that from the day of Pentecost to October 31st, 1517, a span of approximately 1488 years, the kind of theology which Protestantism exalts as being authentic could not have existed. In other words, the early church to which the Reformers theoretically wanted to return had a theology quite different from that of the Reformers. Same source, page 91. The idea that Sola Scriptura was an invention of the 16th century is proven wrong by the fact that the earliest Apostolic Fathers clearly taught Sola Scriptura. The Bible and Apostolic Fathers taught it. Then between 200 and 1580, there is a gradual move towards the adoption of human creeds and traditions. By the time Luther came along, the Roman Catholic Church had become so tradition-bound that the Church barely resembled the one you can read about in the Bible. Luther simply restored the concept found in the Bible that Scripture overthrows all traditions. For Catholic and Orthodox defenders to say that Sola Scriptura was invented in the 16th century is a historically dishonest as it is wishful thinking. We actually agree in part that Luther and Calvin did replace Catholic traditions with some 16th century traditions. We highlight their approach to scripture, not what they specifically taught. Furthermore, Luther and Calvin violated the concept of biblical Sola Scriptura by creating their own set of authoritative man-made creeds. They clearly did replace Catholic creeds with their own set of creeds. This is where both Catholic Church and Reformers went wrong. All creeds are as dangerous as they are unnecessary. After all, both Calvin and Luther accepted most of the early ecumenical councils and creeds. That was their big mistake. Luther and Calvin did not restore the church, they merely reformed it. But we do applaud Luther and Calvin for having the guts to stand up and say current traditions are clearly wrong and contradict scripture. For example, in 1809 AD, Thomas Campbell believed infant baptism was a Bible doctrine when he said, and I quote, when the scriptures speak, we speak, when the scriptures are silent, we are silent. And that's from the direct declaration and address to the Christian Association of Washington, PA, I, mean, I think that's Pennsylvania in 1809. When the reply came back, Mr. Campbell, I quote, If we adopt that as a basis, there is an end of infant baptism. Campbell agreed that the inf even infant baptism would be thrown out if it was not biblical. When Campbell made the statement, he had no idea that when he finally studied the scriptures on the validity of infant baptism, he would discover to his surprise that it was not a Bible doctrine. So Campbell was committed to the principle, but he did not know where it would lead him. Likewise, Luther and Calvin knew that the Catholic system of oral tradition was wrong and were committed to Sola Scriptura, not knowing at the time that later reformers would correctly define it. Luther, Calvin, and Campbell made all made hermeneutic statements of Sola Scriptura that would later change their view of what is true. That's what happens when men throw out traditions and creeds and start to use the Bible only. They begin a journey where they know 
the vehicle in which they ride, but know not where the vehicle will finally lead them. Luther, er, Lu I'm sorry, Luther never dreamed he would leave the Catholic Church when he nailed his 95 articles on the door. Campbell never dreamed he would reject infant baptism when, uh, when he said, where the scriptures speak, we speak. Catholics actually changed from their original Sola Scriptura to their current oral tradition. Um, and I quote, When discrepancies between Catholic doctrine and scripture become apparent, apparent, Catholic apologists stop insisting that the doctrine of the Church could be deduced from scripture and revive the theory of some early heretics refuted by Irenaeus that the Bible does not contain the whole of God's revelation and that a body of traditional doctrine existed in the church equally deserving of veneration. When it was pointed out that things were taught in the Roman Catholic Church for which the Bible furnished to adequate justification, Roman advocates insisted that though the Bible contained truth, it did not contain the whole truth, and that the church was able to is able by them to supplement the deficiencies of scripture, having in those traditions a secure record of apostolic teaching on many points on which the Bible contained only obscure indications or gave no information um, at all. And that's from George Salmon, The Infallibility of the Church. Um, Now let's go over the argument that 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 does not say that the Bible is all sufficient by itself. Um, so let's go there real, really quick. It's uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. If you have your King James Bible, you can read along. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Um, from a, what every Protestant should know about the Orthodox Church, again by Clark Carlton, I quote, what Paul does not say in 2 Timothy 3.16, however, is that the scriptures are sufficient all by themselves. Okay, so... Um, 2 Timothy 3.17 says that scripture will um, furnish us um, or thoroughly furnish them to all good works. It does not say that they are um, furnished unto most good works. And it does not say that scripture will quit partially for good works. Um, in the King James Version here, he uses the imagery that the scripture is able to fully furnish us for every good work. Now imagine you rented an apartment and the asset is fairly furnished. When you move in, you know uh, fairly furnished. The scripture is able to fully furnish us for every good work. In other words, there are no good works that the Bible does not discuss. If we abide with scripture and scripture alone, we need not look to oral church traditions to learn about any other good works. If we do what the Bible says, God will be happy with us, and the ability to read is all we need to refute the false claim made by Clark Carlton. Um, unto all good works means what we all know it to mean, um, meaning that the Bible is um, um, the Bible is the only thing we need for doctrine. And if it's not in the Bible, 
this is not taught in the Bible, then you have to uh, scrap it. And that's why we need to read the Bible, or we will be duped into believing false doctrine.